Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be reacting to a video called Interview with Senior JS Developer in 2022. I feel like this channel is going to really blow up and I just love his channel name. Programmers are also human. I've seen it before, but I could all watch it over and over again because it's so funny. So without me explaining it, let's just watch it and I'll give my reaction. Well, that was a tool chain from last week. This week is different. JavaScript. I love that fake beard. <laughs> I have uh, three production outages named after me. Four. My job is to keep our code running while other packages are changing theirs. Should you learn? That's so funny because it's such a meme where NPM libraries are always being updated. Is it a minor version? Is it a major version? Are there breaking changes? Is <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of React Router sometimes. I don't know. I personally am not a huge fan of React Router because it always changes so much between each versions, but that's another story for another time. Learn JavaScript? Nope. Is there any other option? Nope. Oh, look, another <laughs> nope. library was added today to patch the problems of the other 150 that were also released. Did you know JavaScript was actually written in seven days? Such a messy language. I love it. Did you know JavaScript was actually not written in seven days? No one ever knows what value variable is or what its type is. Now we use TypeScript. We still don't know. I'd rather use Rust or Web. It's so funny because when I first started using TypeScript, I, it was so annoying because there were so many weird things that I'm not used to. And I actually didn't learn how to code using a statically typed language in the beginning. So more often than not, I would use the any variable. And I'd be like, what is this type? What is this type? And just reading the errors of TypeScript are sometimes a little hard to understand. Anyway, as you can tell, this guy's pretty funny already. Assembly. They say adoption is coming. They said that 10 years ago. They say that every year, but this year is different. Is it scalable? <laughs> no. Is it maintainable? No. Is it portable? Not really. Yeah, we used React. We actually used Preact. We actually used Svelte. We actually went back to vanilla JavaScript. Yeah, we're using a library for this. Well, that we rewrote to vanilla JavaScript because it wasn't efficient. We're so funny because it's always this constant need of like making our bundle size smaller, like React is too big. So we'll go to pre-React and then we'll use Svelte and then no, we'll go back to vanilla JavaScript. And then you go back to single page applications and the next JS, like all of these things are always new and shiny and it's supposed to improve our JavaScript application and our experiences. But obviously like sometimes we don't even know, we don't even know what is the best solution, right? Stuck with this messy language now. I love it. JavaScript. Love it. Yeah, it's the de facto standard. Do you know there's a library for that? I wouldn't trust the, let's this say, one. finance application with JavaScript. What our finance application does is, yeah, it's totally fine to use JavaScript, but I'd recommend using TypeScript. Not that we do. We had callback <laughs> hell, and then we went to promises. A wait came out, we went back to promises, and now we rewrote everything back to callbacks because it's just more comfortable. <laughs> that is so funny because. I've seen people, you know, mix and match await and then and all that stuff. And it's just like, there's no rules. There's really no rules to writing JavaScript. Sometimes you could just kind of go as you please. You go from callbacks to promises, back to callbacks, back to await, back to callbacks. If you really want to actually, no one really uses callbacks unless you really need it. But <laughs> at least, you know, it's bad. Oh, it's probably just a quick fix. You know it will take me three to five days. To find it. We tried CoffeeScript, rewrote our code base, tried uh, RIP CoffeeScript because I actually really like CoffeeScript because when I first started learning JavaScript, there was no such thing as like ES6 syntax or any of that nice syntactic sugar. But CoffeeScript was really, really clean at the time, a little ahead of its day, in my opinion. I TypeScript, rewrote our code base, and then we went back to vanilla JavaScript because it's just more comfortable. So we <laughs> rewrote our code base again. Yeah, we used React, and then React 16.8 came out, and we had to rewrite everything to hooks. React. Dude, that hits so hard. I remember when <laughs> React upgrade it to from 15 to 16, everyone started using hooks. And it's like, do we need to convert all of our class components to hooks? Like, do we keep them as classes? And then it just became even worse and worse as time went on because these newer libraries weren't supporting class components. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, what do we do with our application? Do we need to rewrite it? Or 17 came out, we had to rewrite everything again. And exactly. then React Scripts was updated to version 0.4 and we had to fix everything to work with 
local images and now react version 18 is coming out we'll rewrite everything again we rewrote our code base around nine times this month yeah can you i mean obviously he's exaggerating but it really is an honest conversation that teams do need to have about rewriting their application i've i've seen people say version 2 version 3 version 4 because at a certain point, it's just so hard to maintain and it's not a fault of the front end developer or anything. It's just when you're at a company that's growing and growing rapidly, sometimes scope changes, sometimes, you know, all of these other things that you don't consider when first building out the application. It's not just tech dependent, but it's also dependent on what models have changed in back end and all of that. And now you're just serving different aspects to the customers. But obviously, you know, this is a little overboard use Redux, it's totally fine. But, but if you're on it, I'd recommend you use Redux Toolkit. But actually, it's better to use Flux or Flumux or Fluxible. Actually, better to use Recall, not that we do. But now React came out with the Hooks and Context API, which apparently is better than Redux. Apparently, we'll rewrite. <laughs> apparently better than Redux. <laughs> it's so true. Why, why is there so many different types of application state library management, right? Like Redux, uh, now it's context and honestly, context is not the same as Redux. Like they all have different use cases for it, but apparently context is better than Redux, right? Write everything again. Sometimes it just doesn't transpire. We <laughs> usually rewrite our code base then. We actually wrote a custom transpiler to transpile transpiler. It's such a messy language. We use it for it's our website, transpire. desktop app, mobile app, for the fridge, the Tesla. It's not actually native. I mean, it is actually native, but it's sort of not really native. It's sort of hybrid native, but some of it is native. I mean, some people use it. Basically describing React Native. <laughs> use it in a native way, but we don't really use it in a native way, technically. A lot of people are switching back to native. No one has switched yet. Angular? Talk to me when you use Angular 2 or React. NPM is such a bad package manager. No one uses that anymore. NPM is such a good package manager. How many... NPM is such a bad package manager. Five seconds later, NPM is such a good package manager. <laughs> languages have one so that major version breaks our code but our code breaks the minor version i still don't know how to fix pure dependencies until this day <laughs> sorry i stopped a little ahead of time but pure dependencies to this day oh my gosh that's so true you don't deal with it enough to really be like oh how do i fix this <laughs> and I, I don't even know i'm just gonna keep going this sorry i, I keep stopping but it's so funny because a little bit of it is obviously overblown but some of it is kind of true Yarn, bit, pnpm, turbo would make sense, right? JavaScript doesn't think so. jQuery, what are you, five? <laughs> we use jQuery. Global variables, no one uses them. It must be somewhere in the window. How do you debug? <laughs> somewhere no, in you the don't. window. <laughs> you just write good code, but not in JavaScript. No one ever masters JavaScript. I get 100,000 points in Stack Overflow. I'm still a noob. Node is technically multi-threaded. JavaScript is technically performant. Our code? It's never safe. One day it'll blow up. Probably won't work here anymore. Probably we'll be using Rust or WebAssembly or whatever. JS. An array is technically... <laughs> whatever. JS. It's so... How many library names are out there, right? Like, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to just use every single uh, available word out there to represent a library or framework or language <laughs> related to JavaScript somehow. It's crazy. There's like... I don't even know. I don't even know. There's three JS. There's four. Is there four, five, six? It's just going to be a bunch of numbers at a certain point. Technically just an object. Objects are objects. objects. Are object. Null is technically not an object, but objects can be null. So they technically can be non-object unless they're an object, right? So technically <laughs> null is an object. Yes. It's Everything's an object. Hacky, I admit. <laughs> but JavaScript is by design. Is it easy to learn? Have you tried JavaScript? Probably will be a bit hacky. Have you used JavaScript before? I don't recommend. Wow. Probably be a bit hacky. That's <laughs> you know, it's funny because a lot of us, we recommend JavaScript because it's very easy to learn and you could kind of do both front end and back end using JavaScript. But there is some kind of, I don't even know what you call it. There's like a, a belief, I guess, that you, you know, when you write JavaScript, it is a little bit messy, especially if you don't do it well. So it, it's kind of alluding to that point. I don't like our tool chain. Documentation <laughs> and another advantage. Documentation? <laughs> is that it's free. So was Java before it was bought by Oracle. 
<laughs> so we prepare ourselves by installing modules from npm. Then we compile it to TypeScript. Then we use a transpiler called Bubble to transpile it to ES5, load it with system.js, file for bankruptcy, bundle it all up in Webpack, use it in a framework like React and let the state be managed by Redux or Flux, Flummox or Flexible or Recoil or whatever, JS. And voila, all of this just to avoid using jQuery, or in our case, JJQuery. All, this to, less all of this to avoid using jQuery or vanilla JavaScript, actually, but... <laughs> As most of the things. This isn't our production code. It will be tomorrow, though. Probably gonna get fired again. I mean, there's really no alternative to JavaScript right now. De facto. No one really knows what the value is until we get an error. I love it. <laughs> we'll try writing it. Did anyone get that? No one really knows what the value is until you get the error. <laughs> Anything without JavaScript nowadays. JavaScript. I love it. No, I don't recommend it. <laughs> so, I mean, that's it. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I recommend you to go follow his channel. Programmers are also human. He actually does some other <laughs> kind of um, parodies with C++. A Java developer, the junior JavaScript developer, and he only has seven videos and already at 2.28k. So I feel like his channel is going to blow up. Definitely go check him out. Um, but no, I la I've watched this video at least like 10, 15 times probably, and I laugh every single time. So <laughs> definitely check out his channel. I don't know where, what direction he's going to be going into, and I don't even know his name. I just know that he's Programmers are also human, which is a great name as well. Either way, hopefully you like that reaction and I'll see you next time. Bye.